Insanity comes from isolation. Isolation does so much. Now, no doubt, like people are born with different brains or there's like there's serious problems. And if you have them, you know, please consult with a psychiatrist that is going to get you on the right meds or whatever, or, or, you know, seek therapy. There's nothing wrong with those things. Those things are all great things that can benefit you in awesome ways. But man, nothing, nothing is like pouring gasoline on a fire like isolation. If you isolate yourself, man, you are putting yourself in the worst position to have the worst part of your mind, the worst part of your actions, the worst part of your lifestyle manifest into a reality that is just such a train wreck of life. And we were talking about this because uh, one of the guys who was uh, a part of our groups broke up with his girlfriend and some shit happened, man. And, and some crazy shit happened. And how many times have you been there? How many times have I been there where we broke up with somebody, we've lost all our money, we've gotten in a car accident, we're getting sued, something happens to us, right? And we're stuck there and we're isolated. And what do we want to do? What starts happening? And the thoughts that we have when we do not have an outlet to talk to people and the thoughts that we have when we're not around people that can let us open up and just be ourselves, even if those people aren't qualified to talk to us, man, compassion and connection adds to so much. I'm telling you, man, it's a beautiful thing. But when we isolate ourselves, what are the things we do? What are the things that happen? You know, what are the things that happen? Like, uh, like the, a couple of weeks ago, I got ripped off for a, a lot of money, man, a lot of money. That's a, a lot of money to myself and my family and all those things. And it was like, fuck, man, what are we going to do? What's going to happen now? If I don't talk to people, and, and first thing that goes through my head, why the fuck would I talk to somebody? That's not going to get me, you know, 3000 bucks back right away. That's not going to get me the money that I need right now that got taken from me that we don't have to lose. We're about to go on a vacation. What the fuck? Like, I don't have that to lose. Why would I go and talk to somebody? But and so that's the logic that happens. Same thing goes like my girlfriend left me or, you know, maybe I experienced some trauma or maybe I got in an accident or something really bad happened. God, why the fuck would I hang out with other people? I would just waste time. I'm just going to sulk and bitch about it. But here's what happens when we don't integrate with other people and when we let that voice talk, you know, of like, oh man, I just don't want to waste anybody's time with my grief. I don't want to like sit and sulk. I don't want to bitch about things. What good's that going to do me? These people don't know. They don't understand me. Nobody gets it. You know, I've had it worf, worse. You don't understand. Like it, you don't get my pain, blah, 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 blah. And it rattles off into this thing. What happens? Man, I start thinking in my head about stuff that has to do with blame, revenge, self-pity, doubt, all these different things. And so much to the point where I start getting paranoid. I start thinking people are plotting against me. And this is one of those things like I was bringing up. I don't believe some of my friends who've told me this, I don't believe they're mentally ill, Ill people. I literally had a guy, I, I shit you not, very prominent dude in the, in the coaching industry. And he was telling me, he's like, Steve, let me just, I, like my therapist told me to ask you this. Uh, uh, asked somebody that I trust. And I was like, man, you're asking me, geez, you don't have like a better friend, but okay. And he's like, okay, read this Facebook message, read this Facebook message. It says, we'll make up the names. It says, Dave, I hope you do well. You, you don't think there's anything that you, you like, you don't get that. Well, well what do you mean? He, he says, I hope you do well. No, he misspelled this word. And that's a word that we would talk about. And do you, so you, you don't think this guy's trying to like kill me and had drugged me and secretly had me sign something to, I'm not making this shit up. This guy actually told me that. And I said, no, man, it's, uh, you're, you're probably, your therapist is right. You know, you're probably just like overreacting with it. And, and, uh, I don't think that's, that's a deal, but like you should work on this more with your therapist. Cause I think it's a misinterpretation because that's what you're asking me, right? It's a misinterpretation. I shit you not, man. This is one of those things. I do not think that that guy, is schizophrenic. I do not think that, and there were more about like how he hears voices and how this guy may have came in through a radio or whatever, because he doesn't normally act that way. This dude has been sitting in a fucking apartment for the last two years, bitching about how his girlfriend had wronged him and he can't have a relationship and those things. When that happens, you go fucking insane, man. And the fact that he's asking me, who I talk to him once every two months, as his friend that he entrusts with this because his therapist gave him an assignment means he doesn't have friends to talk to. If you have isolation, you get in, I'll even say this, maybe he is schizophrenic and I'm not a doctor or whatever, but I'm not even trying to say I am. What I'm saying is, is in his situation, you cannot assess his psychology in a, in a, proper way. He's too isolated. Same thing goes if somebody's doing speed or if somebody's doing uh, cocaine or they're doing some other drug or they're pill fucked on something. 
man, you cannot see if they're borderline bipolar. They could have those traits. They could absolutely have those traits, but you cannot distinguish the difference until they take those factors out of their life. When we can surround ourselves with people that are good people, man, awesome stuff happens. It's, it's an amazing, amazing thing. It, it's a beautiful thing. And some of those people could be flawed people. Some of those people could be the wrong person. Uh, and I was just thinking about this because I have a friend who's one of the wisest guys. He was homeless. He lived with me for a long time. Great guy. But he's a guy that like in a lot of ways has made choices that didn't necessarily work out well for him. And definitely by society standards, he doesn't have a lot. One of, the, one of the wisest guys I know, and there's almost more quotes that I have from him than any other human being. It's, it's really insane. And I was thinking about this the other night. I was thinking about it, it in a, uh, mainly because some friend shared a, a really fucked up thing. And he shared a fucked up thing with me and a few other people. And no matter what we could say, it's not going to change that thing. But there's a beauty in sharing it. You know, it was, it, was, it, was a, it had to do with a health issue and a loved one. And, and man, it wasn't changing. There's nothing I could have said. There's nothing the other people that were there could have said that, that would have taken that disease away from that person, that his loved one who's sick. You know, we could hug him. We could give him some support. But there's a beauty in that. And I sat there thinking, I was like, man, you know, my old buddy, I remember we were walking out of this Walmart. It was like 2 a.m., some late night. Nobody was really around. It's kind of a shady Walmart, so only the only the crazy people are out. We're just walking there, man. We're walking. I'm side by side. We're in the parking lot. We got our can of beans or whatever the hell it was. And we're walking out into the parking lot. And he says, like, man, isn't this fucking great? Isn't this great, man? We're like cosmic dust. We're like carbon dust that came into this thing that created this other thing and moved into it. And, and now we're this these like machines that are just walking around, these machines of life, of science, of of different elements and we're walking around in this world and we get to think and experience it. It's so fucking awesome. Like I can have this experience. Like we were rocks that can now think and talk to one another. And it's such a beautiful thing. You know, where it, when it ends bad, Steve, you know where we get it wrong. And I'm like, no man, tell me. Cause it was like all into this like hippie, you know, fucking acid trip talk. And he's like, you know where we get it wrong is when we think we can control all that. You know, and I think the lesson of the story is, is bad things happen in our life. You know, all sorts of different stuff happens in our life. But the beauty of it is, is that, fuck man, when we can accept things, when we don't have to control them, when we can start going like, you know what, maybe my role, you know, in, in living a spiritual life where I'm calm in my mind and, and sound in my heart and I can actually be a good person is when I can walk through life and I don't have to, to own everything. And when I can walk through life and even when bad stuff happens to me, I don't try and interpret it as the will of man or whatever. And sometimes I just have to feel bad. Sometimes it's like, you know what? I did get ripped off. Sometimes I did get burned. Sometimes my, my ex-girlfriend, uh, you know, did fuck up my shit. One time I had an ex-girlfriend actually like not only burn all my clothes, but then she took the rest of my clothes and peed on them to mark her territory. And, and that almost made me go back with her because it was like so primal and like, man, Jesus, that's a woman. And then, then you're like, oh, no, no, it's a crazy woman. But, um, but no, man, sometimes we have those things happen to us. And the best thing is, is we just have a friend, you know, to talk to or a group of people we can trust. And we stop trying to weigh the scale of what should happen to us in life and what could happen to us in life and what's given to us. We start looking at those things that we have. And man, that's one of the biggest parts of those lives, of our life, is just to be able to exist and experience, have that choice in our mind to be able to communicate with one another at any given moment. And what do we do with that? You know, we shut doors behind that because we have too much pain. We think somebody can't relate with us. And we think that, you know, our problems aren't big enough or they're too big for people to understand. And we shut that door and guess what happens? Once that door is shut, once we cut off the light, once we cut off the oxygen, once we cut off all that sort of stuff, it turns into blame, it turns into resentment, it turns into I'm so different, it turns into this, this huge belief system where anything beyond that door is an enemy of you and you have to always be fighting it. What a terrible way to live. You want to get sane, surround yourself with people and that's one of the best things you can do for your life, man. It's, it's the core thing of what we do at TSL and the core thing that, that I got to do every day just to maintain. That's why I have these calls.